Hey guys, I'm John Fryer. Welcome to Fryer Funds. Welcome to my kitchen. And welcome to the Fryer Feast series. In this series, we took $15,000. We're investing it into individual companies with all investment decisions made over the weekend to be executed on Monday. This is for people who work nine to five, who don't have time to trade during the week or make decisions during the week. So we focus on the weekend execution and go from there. Now, I wanna point out, this is not financial advice, this is not legal advice, consult your own advisors and make your own decisions. But with that said, let's dive in, see what happened this week and where we're going from here. All right guys, so as always, preface this, this is not financial advice, this is not legal advice, consult your own advisors and make your own decisions. But with that, let's kind of get started here. So since last week, we actually came up a lot and almost uh, hit our all-time high. Our all-time high was just shy of 19,000. I think that was a midweek point though. Um, and we're just shy of that, so we came pretty close. Um, and the other thing I wanna mention here is this OXYWS. Um, I didn't buy this. OXY distributed this to their shareholders. I'm not sure why. I didn't really look into it. I didn't actually buy that. So if you have this in your account, um, it's probably some sort of special dividend or something they did. I haven't looked into it. I don't know what it is, but uh, I'm just going to hold on to it for now. But I just want to point that out. So if you see that, don't be surprised. You're not the only one. All right. So uh, since last week, when we reworked the grill, it went up 10.7% this week since closed Monday. That's when I took the snapshot of how much it was worth. So that, that was a really good uh, rework thus far. Uh, the Fryer Feast altogether is up 4.5%, while the S&P 500 is up 1.85% for this last week. Uh, and that includes the entire week, not just closed Monday, but including Monday's moves. So yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, we had a really good week. Um, on the grill, the only thing that I considered actually changing for this week was taking some profit off AMC because it really came up and buying more CNK. They're both movie theaters. They both reported. Um, I didn't get a chance to look into what those were, but uh, CNK went down and AMC went up. So why, I'm not sure yet. So I, didn't, I don't want to actually do that until I can do some research. So we'll look at that maybe next week. Um, however, there were, was some old law about how movie theaters interact with the studios and how movies are distributed that's possibly getting removed or um, the, the laws getting removed. So uh, they both came up with that news. So I don't know much about that. Again, I got to do more research, but it wasn't my focus this weekend um, or this last week at all. But yeah, so otherwise we're leaving the grill alone this week. Um, instead, we're, we're spending all of our time on uh, the crock pot and the um, frying pan. But before we get into that, so Trump just signed yesterday, today is Sunday. So yesterday he signed the extension for the unemployment bonus, but only at $400 instead of the $600 it was. We talked about this a little last week. So this does mean lower consumer spending, but it's not completely dead anymore. So that is a major boost. It wouldn't surprise me if that has some fluctuation and rotations in the stock market, being that it's less, but it's not completely gone. So it's, it's, it's depending on your point of view, it's good or bad, um, but it, it does make a difference in terms of what stocks are going to move. Um, reading through all the earnings this week, a couple of handful of things that I kind of picked up on. So a lot of companies, as we kind of figured, are very much focused on saving cash now. So they're not uh, signing up for multi-year contracts, saving money in the long term. They're looking at saving cash and preserving cash for right now while we're going through this pandemic. Uh, advertised spending was cut this last quarter, quarter and a half um, since the pandemic started, but advertising is coming back through Q3 and Q4. So we'll see more advertising dollars go out there, which is good for some stocks, particularly the social media stocks that kind of got hurt on their revenue and stuff should start coming back and then a few others. Um, Mid-sized companies were the ones that were least prepared for the new work from home environment. If you're a really small company, either you had to shut down anyway, or you kind of worked from home and didn't have as big of an issue with it. So the mid-sized companies, they didn't have the tools of software and stuff in place. So they're the ones that really had to spend to be able to get the work from home environment going. The large enterprises, they did too, but to a less extent of kind of an emergency thing for the large enterprises. Um, a lot of companies, and I mean a lot of companies, saved a lot of money not spending on travel and for office expenses. So a lot of companies had a lower revenue amount, but their bottom line was better because of how much they saved through 
people working from home and a few other things like every company was trying to save money otherwise too but this this was a big factor in how much companies were spending on travel and office expenses now that they've seen how much they actually can save by that um, it wouldn't surprise me if that's going to fuel even more people working from home going into the future and less travel <clears throat> so there are a lot of stocks that have come up in price a lot um, possibly I've, I've seen as much as six times 600 percent since their bottom in March um, some of them have like tripled since January February when things were kind of at all-time high and then they released their earnings and everyone expected them to do really well and they did but they only did well 30 to 50 percent a couple were like 80 percent better than last year um, those aren't so bad but a lot of them although they had strong earnings it wasn't nearly enough to back up the new stock price because it's run up so much so I'm expecting value investors to start taking profits here so there's a lot of stocks that have just overrun. I'm expecting some sell-offs, some corrections. Uh, the NASDAQ hit an all-time high this last week, uh, like every single day. <clears throat> so, it's, except for Friday when the NASDAQ sold off, which was actually really nice, but we'll get into that. Um, actually, we'll, we'll go ahead and just talk about that now. So the NASDAQ all week was going up, setting new record highs, until Friday it sold off with a lot of tech stocks, which is actually really convenient for us because that's where my background is, is tech, knowing kind of what they're worth, where they're valued at. And a lot of them were over expensive, in my opinion, and I was a little afraid on Thursday that I wouldn't be able to get into what I wanted to. Then Friday it all sold off, and now a lot of them actually are at a decent enough price now. Uh, some could still go lower, but we're gonna go ahead and grab them anyway. Um, but we'll talk about them as we go through them. Uh, so yeah, like last week, instead of going over all the movement that has to happen. We're just gonna look at what the new crock pot and frying pan look like, um, because otherwise this list would be a lot longer. So starting with the crock pot, uh, we're gonna keep it at 15 companies. And these are companies that are high quality that if I had to buy and just hold for five years, I'd be fine just investing in them for the long term. So, um, and then the percentages, I use the $15,000 base that we started with, even though we're at almost 19,000, because I still like to keep some cash on the side as this correction happens, we can lower our cost basis on a bunch of things. Um, and who knows if there's a second wave of Corona or um, some other drastic news with that or China or the election happens, I wanna have plenty of cash on the sideline to be able to buy more if we have another sort of flash crash or correction here. So uh, let's start here in the crock pot. We're starting with Apple. Now they are gonna do a stock split at the end of August. So we might cut down the number. So the number of shares will go from one to four, but each share will be worth um, $110, let's say, give or take. Um, so we might end up selling a share or two because it's a little overvalued possibly. Anyway, we'll look at that down the road, but for now it's still just one share. Adobe, AMD, um, we got into this just at the right time because it recently really spiked. So four shares, we currently have five, so we'll have to sell one, uh, on kind of unfortunately. I kind of want to keep it, but eh, we're going to go ahead and take profits because like I said, there could be this correction coming in AMD. A lot of people take profits off AMD. Uh, CRM, 1%. Disney, this is they still need to recover. They did come up to 130, so one share there. If they come back down to 110, we'll probably go ahead and bump this up and have two shares there. Uh, Facebook, one share. Intuit, Microsoft, um, ServiceNow, and then Netflix and NVIDIA. So these are two that I've been watching, I really like. Um, I have them in other portfolios, just this portfolio is so small that um, I don't like their share price. It's above 450 for both of them. But after the sell-off on Friday, looking at the way things kind of are, I, I kind of hope the, there's a bigger sell-off tomorrow before I go, go to buy these. They're, they might be a little expensive, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and add them because they do both seem to be climbing and they'll easily recover back to where they are now. Um, if they do spike tomorrow and they go up like 10%, I might hold off on buying those. And if I do, I'll, I'll tweet that um, or post them on Facebook. But otherwise, yeah, they're, they're a little expensive, but they're both good quality long-term companies. And then, of course, PayPal. And then Atlassian, they uh, reported earnings and then had the sell-off. So they're actually at a really good price right now. They might drop a little more, but uh, we're just gonna go and grab those two shares. The Trade Desk, um, they've come up a lot, but they're an advertising platform for those that don't know. And so like I said, Q3 and Q4, advertising is coming back. So the Trade Desk should do really well. Um, and then long-term Trade Desk is just really good. And same with Twilio. Um, they're, they're doing really good through the pandemic. They were doing good before. I've invested in them for years, um, made a lot of money off of Twilio. So 
yeah, that's what the Crock-Pot, those 15 companies look like, or are. Uh, now for the frying pan. So, kept it at 30 companies. So both these are smaller than the grill. The grill has 34 companies, which is still much simpler than the 70 some odd that was in there before. Uh, both these stayed about the same size, but I've simplified it in a lot of ways, just in terms of what companies are there and um, kind of the what, what their theme, I guess, is. Uh, so again, 15% allocation. Now for all of these, I did 1% allocation, so not two or three. Uh, other than Pan W, Palo Alto Networks, their stock price is 250 or so. And so technically I'm allocating 2%, but I'm okay with that because they're a good quality company. I half tempted to put them in the crock pot, but they're not, they don't have the reputation yet to be uh, classified there. But anyway, so everyone else, we're looking at 1% allocation except for Palo Alto Networks. So starting with Etsy and then Grubhub, UPS, we'll have to sh sell a share there. I was right, they, they really did blow it out of the water with their earnings and the shares really come up. Um, Stitch Fix, uh, we bought a couple extra last week that's come back up, so we're, we'll shut a couple off Stitch Fix, but still seven shares. Take Two Interactive, Zanga, Twitter, Snapchat, Roku, Viacom CBS, Turtle Beach, Netgear, Logitech, HPQ, uh, HP. So for those that don't know, HP is technically kind of two companies. They have HPQ and HP uh, E Enterprise. So HPQ is their home laptops, home printers, uh, things like that. And the stock hasn't come up as much as what, reading through all of the other earnings out there, laptop sales are through the roof and both HP and Dell, their stock price should be higher, but Dell has more exposure to the enterprise side and they haven't split off like HP has for stocks. So instead of Dell, I'm going with HP here because I think when they report earnings here in a week or two, I forget exactly when, um, HP is going to blow it out of the water and their stock's going to do, should uh, really skyrocket from there because, yeah, they, they're selling a lot more laptops than the stock price uh, indicates. Uh, live person, we've done really well with that. So we're selling a couple shares, taking profits. Uh, Square, we're adding. Dropbox, we're adding. Upland Software, we're adding. VMware, we're adding. Uh, Palo Alto Networks, like I said, this is technically a 2% allocation. We're swapping out our security uh, companies with, for CrowdStrike, Okta, and Ping. Otherwise, we had FireEye, Cyber, Arc, and Zscaler. Now, Zscaler is still good. I kind of wanted to keep them, but they've run up a little. Um, so we're going to go ahead and sell and take the profit there and swap into these for now. Uh, and then Lowe's, we're still keeping. Western Digital, we're going to buy an extra share. Now, their stock dropped like crazy after earnings, but I think it's a beaten up stock, not a beaten up company, uh, reading through their earnings report and everything. So I really like Western Digital with, with where they're at. So we're going to buy another share and um, this is going to pay off really well, I think within the next three, maybe six months, that it should at least double. Uh, J&J, of course. And then Dick's Sporting Goods, because of the camping thing we talked about last week, a lot of people are camping. Big Five reported this last week, blew their numbers kind of out of the water as their quarter progressed. Um, so their stock jumped. And Dix, it's back up to kind of where it was before the pandemic started, but it has a lot more room on the upside. So that's the one I'm going to go with for that particular trade. Peloton for fitness, at home fitness. Zillow reported they're doing really well. I kind of wanted to get into it before uh, earnings, but mm, obviously didn't. So we're going to add Zillow now because they have a lot more upside because they, they really blew the numbers out of the water in the stock. Didn't didn't go up as much as I think it can just off the news. So, And then Chegg for at-home school. There's a couple others in there. Uh, I did a lot of research on school stocks, and that's one where I want to point out that, like I said, a lot of stocks have been overbought. Their price is too high based on their earnings they just reported. Chegg, surprisingly enough, even though it's the one everyone's talking about, their stock price didn't jump up as much as it could have or should have on their earnings. So I'm adding Chegg. And there's other school uh, online school companies that are good, but their stock's just overpriced right now, so we're not adding those. Um, that was kind of a theme of a lot of things that I looked at was um, their stock price was just so high that it's it's hard. Like Logitech here, so Logitech is very similar for what they do in terms of they sell you know hardware for people staying home, and their stock price has run up, but surprisingly not as much as I thought it would. So um, it's not a laggard. Like Netgear, that was a laggard, and Live Person that was a laggard. So we we made a lot of uh, a lot of return on both those when we bought those a few weeks back. Uh, Logitech doesn't have as much up room as those two did. These two have kind of caught up to where their earnings are, but not quite. Um, 
but there was a couple others that I looked at and they're just they're overbought right now. So Logitech is, still isn't overbought. Same with HPQ. And like I said, they're really far down. Uh, with the video games, Activision, we had that. We're going to go ahead and take our profits off that um, just because they're having some other internal issues. Their earnings were decent but weren't um, looking forward. That like Their stock price is a little overpriced for where it's at. So these two, however, take two Interactive and Zynga. They still have plenty of upside, so we'll, we'll actually add to our position on Zynga, and we already own this. Um, so yeah, that's all I want to mention on those. So um, a lot of actions to do tomorrow, but that's what it looks like, and that's the portfolio. Um, if thing, I'm expecting a lot of movement tomorrow, but I don't know if any of that movement's going to be big. So if any of these companies move more than 5 or 10%, I might change up the number of shares, might buy more, not buy yet. Like if NVIDIA and Netflix, if they go up 10%, I, I'm not going to buy them tomorrow. Um, but if they go down 10%, absolutely. So we'll see what ha- kind of happens tomorrow. I will, any changes, I will post uh, on Facebook or Twitter, um, I guess both. But otherwise, that that's the plan for tomorrow. So thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week. And again, none of this is financial advice or legal advice. Consult your own advisors and make your own decisions. And with that, we'll talk to you next week.